Uh, this is for the Bethany Diaspora Church, Saturday, 5th October, 2024. Now, as we look at 2 Peter chapter 1, we are going to now look at what we call a support system. And this is important. Sometimes we think of our faith in the Lord Jesus and we think of it as if that's all there is to it. Actually, there is much more to our faith than we realize. God has also provided what we may call a support system. And today we focus on uh, two verses, but there are four aspects which we must consider. Right, reading from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence and to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Now, let's take a look at this. It's very important. So we're going to practice what is known as reviewing. Right? So from 2 Peter 1, we got to review 2 Peter 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. Now, this is going to be important because we are looking at concepts that are very, very closely related. We have faith in the Lord, therefore we have righteousness imputed to us. Right? And all this is found in the knowledge of God, the Father, and of the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all these things are very important. They're all connected. So we need to review. The second thing we need to do is to learn how to reflect. To reflect is to go beyond mere review. Review, we can look at all the effects and we can state them. But now we need to think about the, the reflection part of it. And as we reflect, we go deeper. The Word of God becomes assimilated. It becomes, it becomes a part of us. And then we look at what we call registry. Right? So what registers inside us now must be, okay, we understand faith. Now we can understand today, we're going to talk about this idea of virtue. And then we're going to talk about this idea of knowledge. And then self-control. And then perseverance. But well, these are things that we need to look at. Right? So these are three things we can do. To review, to reflect, to register. Now, we have three aspects uh, more that's added okay so we take all talk, talk about these things here the first part of it we are to give all diligence we are to add to our faith virtue and that is a sense of moral excellence then after that we look at this idea of knowledge now we look at three more aspects today and this is called cell control right so from faith to virtue to knowledge that's the first three aspects. Now we are taking a look at the idea of knowledge, of self-control, perseverance to godliness. Now let's take a look at this very carefully. What does self-control really mean? Now it's interesting and important to note that it's actually linked as part of the Spirit of God uh, fruit. Right? So in Galatians 5.23, we have the last part of it, and the word is called uh, self-control, that same word. So when we talk about developing these qualities, remember that it is also part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so we see a combination. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse 25, Paul used the illustration of an athlete or a boxer in the games in those days, right? And he says, those who are involved in competition, they are temperate in all things. And the word temperate, 1 Corinthians 9.25, is actually the same word here, self-control, right? So when we look at this idea of self-control, what does that mean? Well, we have two things to bear in mind. There is the work of the Holy Spirit and it results in fruit. There is the work of the, our believer, ourselves, and we learn to do self-control. 
Now, this is something that is vital to take note of. I mean, when we look at a self-control problem and we begin to realize a lot of people have very little self-control, right? Starting with children, they want control of everything, but they have no self-control. And when parents give in to their children, they are encouraging to the children to have no self-control. That's a problem. Or when it comes to eating, some people overindulge and they eat. And some people, I mean, you know, sometimes we read about people, or some people how they eat until they overeat and they die. Can that happen? Some people have excess weight problem. If it is an organic problem, if it's a disease problem, we understand. But sometimes it is just simply no control. So when a person wants to become an athlete, a person com is a competitor, if there is no self-control, there is no way in which he can ever hope to succeed to become a champion. Well, you know what? It applies in our life too. See, a lot of times we have no self-control when it comes to reading the Lord's Word, when it comes to prayer, when it comes to serving, and we yield to whatever is there. We yield to the handphone, we yield to whatever out there that is attractive. And once we get caught in that, we have in fact lost self-control. But self-control is absolutely vital because if we don't have the self-control, you'll find that our progress in our faith is going to be limited. Self-control helps to build up this faith that we have. And if we don't have self-control, you'll find that our faith level, sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes it goes astray, sometimes it falls flat. What's the problem? And one of the key problems is that of a lack of self-control. And so here it is. If we want to exercise, then we must exercise self-control too. If we are going to exercise and then we can overeat, it will undo everything that we are doing. And so we have to understand this thing called self-control, or sometimes we call it self-discipline, but that's what it is, the self-control. Now, as we look at these things here, we look at knowledge, and then we look at self-control. Now, we look at the next word that goes with it. If I have self-control, then I can also persevere. And this is important for us, to understand this idea of perseverance it's an absolutely important thing right sometimes the word same word perseverance is translated as patience sometimes it's translated as endurance but it's actually the same word perseverance right so we take it, one of the most important texts to read alongside is Romans 5 where Paul wrote these words Romans 5, 1 to 5, right? Similar idea. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we can rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now, that is all well and good. Now, let's look at the next three verses. Not only that, we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Now, that's the word perseverance, right? Which Peter used the same as well. And he says, perseverance. From perseverance is character. From character, hope. So if you were to take a look at Paul's experience, this would be his list to develop himself. Peter has a different set of experience, but they are very similar because depending upon what we experience in our life, we will see certain things appear differently. But there are some basic fundamentals which are the same. So when we have tribulation in our life, as we experience tribulation, what happens? Right? Well, Paul tells us, if we undergo tribulation properly, what will come out is we will learn perseverance. And if we are people who persevere, then we will have character. And character in itself 
is the Christian character. It's, that's you now. That's the stronger you now. And this would produce hope within us. So basically, we have an agreement with Paul and Peter. They may use different experiences, but perseverance is consistently the same in either set of experiences. Right? So this is important for us. So now we come across this word called uh, godliness. Now, this is very important. So if we have all of these things here and we don't have godliness, then we still fall short. So the question is, what is this idea of godliness anyway? Right? So we make a number of references. Okay? In Acts 10 verses 2 and 7, Cornelius is de described simply as a devout person. What is a devout person? Actually, it's a godly person. That's what it means. There is godliness in his life. Okay, now we go on further. For Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, you must cultivate godliness. 1 Timothy 4, 7. Now, this is to a young pastor. And then children are to show proper regard and respect or we call piety to parents. If children are allowed to hit their seniors, hit their uncles, aunties, hit their parents, then they are not considered godly. Obviously. And children must not be allowed to go and use their hands and legs and kick people anyhow they like. But that will show you that there is no godliness inside them at all. Well, this is something that we need to cultivate within us. Right? So the Christian life must be such that we are very clear as to what it's all about. So there is faith, that's, that's salvation. We cultivate virtue, which is moral excellence. Then there is knowledge. And then we go on from there, from knowledge, uh, we go on to do what, what we're looking at, self-control. Right? All of these things are related. And as we go through tribulation, we cultivate perseverance and then as we cultivate per perseverance what will emerge is godliness when you put up all of these things together you begin to realize how significant they really are right unfortunately the reality of it all is that many people concentrate on salvation on faith in the lord jesus and we tell them you're going to heaven you know, it's okay. Everything is okay now. And we do not teach these aspects of Christian life. And this is a sad reality. These virtues, these things have been badly, sadly neglected. And so the, many Christians are just weak and defeated all the time because these things are not taught and these things are not developed. Result, look around. It's very easy. Many believers are weak ones. Very few people have good testimonies. More are the poor testimonies. And then they are unable to stand up and to stand out as believers. So the challenge is, what are we seeking to um, produce as we look at people who are members of the church? This must be our challenges. And they are firstly personal. Right? We have to give diligence to all of these things. That's vital. Okay? We must make every effort, diligence, all diligence. We need to be consistent because if we don't develop these things, we don't even focus on these things here. We've got nothing more to teach than just preach the gospel. That's the problem with people who say that they are evangelists. They present the gospel. But they do not teach any of these aspects. And so they end up with preaching half the gospel. We need to emphasize that this is all part of the word of God for, uh, for all of us. Right? So the next thing that we need to do beyond personal challenge is to promote these truths. We must speak about them to our family members. Practice them within the family. Encourage the practice of these things in the context of the church. 
And this is vital. So when as we look at all these things here, our challenge must be for all of us to ponder and to pray over all of these things here. And this is absolutely vital. Because if we were to only speak about salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ without attempting to build up all of these things here, we will end up with a very, very uh, confused understanding of what salvation is all about. The Lord Jesus Christ was not sent to us to suffer so much so that we could all end up just simply as baby Christians, carnal Christians, weak Christians, doing nothing much for the Lord. We were meant to stand out as servants of God, as people who are faithful, who are loyal, who are fruitful in all our endeavors. Let's understand this and be challenged to consider and ponder this great truth. Well, let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the challenge to cultivate our faith, our character in every way possible. Help us to give heed to what we read in 2 Peter 1. How we should be developing our faith, cultivating virtues, going deeper in knowledge, developing self-control, perseverance, and so much more. We recognize there's a whole lot of work for us to do. Help us to be stirred within our heart, to persevere, to constantly work at it until we develop a godly character. Lord, hear this our prayer and bless us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.